Hi everyone, this is Lane Biss and today we're going to be talking about how to break out of your artist block. I used to work with K4 students and whenever I would hand them paper and crayons, it was just amazing to me to see that they weren't saying, oh, I don't wanna to paint today. Today is not a good day for me to paint. I'm not inspired to do so. They were excited to create something. They didn't care whether it was good or not. They were just all about creating some art. And it's so important to kind of connect with that inner child in order to continue to be a successful artist. Sometimes we tend to rationalize that the reason we don't wanna create art is because we're either not making money with it or because we're not gaining awards or we don't have shows or no one is liking our stuff. In reality, art is one of those ventures that should only be making one person happy and that person should be you. Art is akin to therapy it's not only cathartic because it allows you to get some feelings out of you but you feel good in the end because you've created something and i realize that most of us have to make money either with our artwork or with another endeavor but having to make money with our artwork sometimes it sucks the joy right out of it and that in itself creates a block so here are some tips that i use in order to get myself out of the slump Setting the mood is not the same for everyone. While some people might just work with maybe a lit candle and the right music, some people need the right lighting or maybe they need the right t-shirt to wear because it's their favorite t-shirt. What conjures the mood is individual. But for me, it does require a spe very specific t-shirt and I love the color red. The color red is the color of passion, is the color of movement. So for some people, it doesn't mean the same thing. Uh, you should surround yourself with the colors that you love, with the colors that you feel most inspired with. And for me, that is red. Second, you may want to look at your desk. This is not the desk I draw on. The desk I draw on is over on this side and it is a mess. However, it's my mess and I can find things. If you're okay with your mess, that's fine, but you may want to consider whether or not that mess is conducive to being productive. If it's not, then clear it out. For me, I can work around it. There are certain things that must be on my desk, for example, paints or brushes that I'm using, uh, maybe even some books because I might be reading something. I might not be going to my desk to create Perhaps I wanted to brush up on something in or, uh, or our technique before I actually started a piece of art. So that's why that book is there. So make sure that if something is on your desk, that there's a reason for it. Sometimes for me, it's really important that I look at my material and see how I can refresh it. So if I am, um, if my favorite palette is running low on certain colors, I try to go and buy those colors or maybe buy a brand new brush that I've never used in order to see how I can integrate it into my work. That sort of thing makes you want to actually create artwork. So keep that in mind whenever you are in the process of purchasing something. Buying things shouldn't be just for the sake of buying they should have a purpose. If you have a purpose for it, it's gonna inspire you to create something, thus the mood will arrive. I very slightly talked about aromatherapy and though aromatherapy is not something I use all the time, I do like to have my office slash studio smelling a very specific way. There are certain smells that really make me want to stay here and you want to be surrounded with beautiful things. So, not only does the core matter, but also the way your home or your studio smells matters. So I happen to have a lot of cinnamon because I love that smell in my studio. And whenever possible, I love pomegranate. It's the little things really. The 
There have been many times that I have wanted to create art and the only thing I can do is just sit at my desk. When you sit at your desk at a very specific time, what you're doing is you're creating a habit. When you create a habit, the thing that you're supposed to be accomplishing starts to happen. So for me, I would just sit at my desk and sometimes the mood wouldn't come and I'm like, okay, well, I'm done. Sometimes what I would do is I would do a lot of calligraphy uh, hand warm-ups. And if you don't know what those are, there's an actual video in my playlist where you can actually see some of the calligraphy warm-ups. And I do three whole pages of calligraphy warm-ups. By the time I'm done warming up, thoughts and ideas have come into my head that are ready to be on paper. And that has helped me a lot. If you're a calligraphy writer, or if you are a lettering writer, this is definitely something that you may want to try, especially when you don't know what to write. Uh, having that warm up time is very zen, it's, med it's very meditative, and you can actually start creating something worthwhile. <laughs> the ritual of creation is something that I basically do for myself. Because I'm such a creature of habit, I need to have something that triggers a sequence. So for example, whenever I want to go to bed, I make sure that I put on my pajamas, the room temperature changes, there's no TV, and I'm under my blanket. But I also like certain type of music to be played in order to, for me to start unwinding. That works for me. Could it work for you? Humans are creatures of habit. So whenever it comes to attracting the creative muse, it would be helpful to have some sort of ritual. One of the rituals that I have is I try to be up and out of my bed and having had breakfast, coffee, or whatever it is I'm having that day by a certain time. By that certain time, I like to have picked out a palette, paper, brushes, and pencils that basically say I'm ready. And I sit at my desk. I don't wait for the mood to arrive. I just kind of look through a bunch of images that inspire me. Because if the images inspire me, then I'm going to find something that is going to make me want to draw. So think about those steps that you have to take in order to start creating. Honoring the mood is actually a feng shui philosophy. When you give honor to things, when you give the proper space to the things that you, uh, that you give value to, they honor you back. So for me, it's very important that I honor my mood, that I honor the mood of creation. Sometimes when the muse comes in and hits you over the head with an idea, it's not at the most convenient time. So regardless of whether or not you can go ahead and express and execute your idea at that moment, or you may have to wait. There are certain things that you can do in order to, ment to hold the hand of the muse so you, whenever you get home, you can work it. One of those ways is having a little notebook ready. Uh, if you don't have a little notebook, maybe pulling out your phone or having an application where you can actually take some notes or maybe some audio notes would help out a lot. I know for me, sometimes I have to speak it, sometimes I can type it and it comes out just right. And when I get home, I'm ready to draw. When you get the urge to draw and you happen to be near your studio or at home, I try to always just say, you know, I need a moment. I need to go do this. Once again, it's part of that give honor and space to the thing that you prioritize but so that thing can honor you back when i am able to say okay in this moment i'm just gonna draw and i really need to dedicate time and space for this i find that my muse returns more often and when she does the ideas are great so whenever you feel you find that urge or that need to go ahead and draw honor it take a moment Go to your studio, do what you need to do, and then go on with life. Another thing I like to do is while I'm in the process of creation, I like to turn on a very specific playlist. The playlist is, not, is neither romantic or sad or happy. It's just music. Music that allows me not to think about anything critical. 
sometimes whenever you shift your thinking from being critical and being uh, perhaps not so kind to yourself, that's your inner critic. So if you can turn off your inner critic by putting on music, you will be more successful in the process of creation and you will be able to break through that artist block. So whenever possible, take some time and actually create a Spotify or in your Apple uh, iTunes, uh, create a list that is basically just for the sole purpose of creation. And that maybe can loop and loop and loop so you don't have to worry about putting on the next song. Uh, I actually happen to have several lists of music in my channel. However, because music tastes are so different from person to person, I highly recommend that you create your own. And if you happen to create your own, share it in the comments below because I love music and I'll listen to anything. Sometimes it's very hard to reacquaintance yourself with the reasons as to why you started your creative endeavor. And it is important that not only you remind yourself why you're doing it, remind yourself why you love it. Yes, most of us make money with it, but if you're constantly thinking, how can I make money with this? You're basically sucking out all the joy out of your creation, out of the process of creation. So it's very important that you tell yourself, what made me love this in the first place? What was the first day that I realized that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, if that's what you decided. Whether you're writing music, whether you are sculpting a sculpture, whether you are drawing an apple, whatever that may be, remind yourself why you're doing it. It usually tends to ignite that passion again. Another question that I like to ask myself is, what would three-year-old me would do? And I, if I remember correctly, I was constantly drawing, talking, and reading. Yes, I knew how to read at the age of three. And whenever I feel like I can't draw or you can't make me draw today, I started thinking about what would three, what would three-year-old Elaine do? And it's often very peculiar what I would do, what I would say, depending on the moment, because there are days where I would say, I would go outside. I would go to the park. And you know, maybe that is what you need. Maybe you need to go outside. Maybe you need to get out of the studio and do something else. There is nothing wrong with following that little kid and having some playtime, some downtime from being constantly pressured to create in order to make money. Whenever you allow yourself time to play or time to watch a movie or have just some free time, you actually allow for yourself to be creative. You give yourself a break. In giving yourself a break, you allow yourself to break through the artist block or whatever writer's block or composer's block, whatever you might be going through. Another reason you may not be creating is fear. Uh, you either afraid people are not gonna like it or that it's not good enough or you're gonna waste material time Whatever you, you may have different fears for whatever reason if your problem is in fact fear You need to really be honest with yourself one thing that has helped me is journaling I like to just write out all of my worries on a piece of paper and after I'm done writing them I usually feel better about proceeding in the process of creation of whatever piece I'm working on. The idea of fear is that it keeps you safe. If you don't try anything, you don't fail at anything. To be creative is to be courageous. So you have to be honest with yourself about the feelings that you're having so you can get past them. There are so many things that you can do in order to get past your writer's block or your artist block or your composer's block. But some of the things that you need to always make yourself aware is that any artistic endeavor, whenever you're pursuing it, practice makes great. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. They might look perfect, but they're not. So it's really important that you give yourself and allow yourself the freedom to make mistakes. Sometimes mistakes can be a fabulous way of discovering something 
maybe even a different art style and because there is no such thing as perfection you can be free from the burden of having to please everyone and be perfect for everyone just be great be good enough for you don't worry about anyone else don't censor yourself put your work out there lastly there's a saying that says time you enjoy wasting is not wasted i like to say paper that you enjoy wasting wasn't wasted or paint that you enjoy wasting was not wasted it's so important that you realize that whatever material you are consuming in the process of creation is not a waste you're getting somewhere liberate yourself from feeling like oh no i have to buy paper and it has to be ex very expensive or anything like that all you have to do is have paper have your material start where you're at and just create nothing is ever wasted thank you so much for watching and if you're a deep dive patreon supporter you will have this particular lesson as a downloadable inside in patreon so go check that out Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notifications bell. Otherwise, YouTube is not going to tell you I've uploaded a new video. Thanks again, and go make something couture.